A very common pediatric fracture, usually of the upper extremity in the forearm or wrist, is what's called a green stick fracture. Now this type of fracture is an incomplete fracture. It results from a bending stress, most often from a high energy fall. Another way to describe these types of injuries are what's known as a fouche, or a fall onto an outstretched hand. Now this image displays a green stick fracture of the distal ulna. Notice how the fracture line only interrupts one cortex, and the cortex next to the arrow is actually still intact. This, by definition, is how we classify the fracture as incomplete. Now sometimes this bending stress is referred to as plastic deformation, which is a helpful term when trying to rationalize green stick fractures. Now kids are like rubber bands. They're flexible and bendable and extremely compliant, musculoskeletal speaking. Now like a young tree with healthy and bendy twigs and branches, or like a plastic straw or water bottle, these types of fractures will bend, not break completely, and they usually heal quite well. The next fracture we need to discuss is a torus, or buckle fracture. Now these fractures are also incomplete, which means... Correct, these are unicortical breaks. They occur via an axial load on the bone, also most often seen from a fall. So, for example, while trying to break a fall, the bone experiences an axial load that may cause compression of one cortex, thus leading to a subtle fracture like the one seen here. Here are your compressive forces. Here's your subtle fracture seen here of one side of the bone. So in summary, just remember that kids are pliable. Green stick fractures result from a bending force. The plastic deformation that occurs is usually evident on imaging. Now torus or buckle fractures result from an axial force. The bone itself will not look bent. Now both of these appear as incomplete unicortical fracture lines that present most commonly in the pediatric upper extremities.